Lewis says, Christianity tells us that if we surrender, we will find true life. And not only will we find true life, but we will find something far beyond what we could imagine. What we have to do is surrender ourselves to find our true self. It is when we give up trying to control our life that we discover that God is there to surprise us with his fullness and grace. He says this in his book, Mere Christianity. My friends, you are walking through life perhaps feeling a little worn out, a little lost, or simply tired. You are wondering when things will change, when that breakthrough will come. Well, my friends, let me tell you something directly from the bottom of my soul. God is about to surprise you in ways you never imagined, as it says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I know it is easy to get caught up in the daily routine, to feel that your dreams are drifting further away, or that your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. But let me tell you something. God is working behind the scenes in ways you cannot imagine. He is orchestrating a masterpiece, tailor-made just for you, and it will leave you speechless. Think about it for a moment. Throughout history, God has surprised his people. He took a shepherd boy named David and made him king. He took a persecutor of Christians named Saul and turned him into the Apostle Paul, spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. He took a ragtag group of fishermen and turned them into the foundation of his church. And guess what? He is not finished yet. God is still in the business of turning ordinary people into vessels of his extraordinary power. He is still in the business of turning your mess into a message, your test into a testimony, and your trials into triumphs. As it says in Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 to 3, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. So, my dear friends, do not lose heart. Do not lose hope, because just when you least expect it, God will show up and move in your lives. He will open doors you never knew existed. He will provide in ways you never thought possible, and he will take you to places you never dreamed you could go. You see, God specializes in the unexpected. He loves to take the impossible and make it possible. He loves to take the broken and make it whole. He loves to take the lost and bring them home. And let me tell you something, my friends. You have not been forgotten. You have not been overlooked. You have not been abandoned. You are loved, valued, and chosen by the creator of the universe. As it says, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So hold on tight and keep the faith, because your victory is coming. Your miracle is on its way. Your season of abundance is just around the corner. And when it happens, when God surprises you with his goodness and grace, do not forget to give him all the glory, honor, and praise, because he is worthy of it all. Lewis says, In the end, there are two kinds of people, those who say to God, Thy will be done, and those to whom God says, Then thy will be done. All those who are in hell chose it. Without that self-choice there could be no hell. But even in the darkness, even in loss and weariness, God is present, ready to surprise and redeem those who still turn to him, no matter how late it is. He says this in his book, 
the great divorce. Now let us delve even deeper into this truth. When we talk about how God will surprise you, it is not just about positive thinking or empty promises. It is about accessing the profound truth that God is always working behind the scenes, orchestrating the details of your life in ways you cannot even begin to comprehend. Think about the times in your life when you were caught off guard by a sudden blessing, a miraculous provision, or a door that opened when all others seemed closed. Those moments were not just random occurrences. They were divine interventions, orchestrated by a God who delights in surprising his children. But here is the thing about surprises. They often come when you least expect them. They do not always fit neatly into your plans or follow the timeline you have set for your life. That is because God's ways are higher than our ways and his timing is always perfect. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power, that is at work within us. So if you are feeling discouraged or disillusioned because things have not turned out the way you hoped or planned, take heart. God is still at work, even in the midst of life's mess and uncertainty. He has not forgotten you, and he has not abandoned his plans for your future. In fact, it is often in the waiting, in the seasons of uncertainty and doubt, that God does some of his greatest work. Lewis says, You cannot try to hold on to happiness. Happiness is a byproduct of something greater. And God surprises us with this happiness when we least expect it. When we stop looking for happiness in ourselves and start looking to Christ, we find a joy that transcends our understanding. God surprises us by turning our pain and weariness into a source of deep joy and renewal. He says this in his book, Surprised by Joy. It is in these moments when our faith is tested and stretched that we learn to rely more fully on him and his promises. And let me tell you, my friends, when you learn to trust in God's timing and his faithfulness, that is when true miracles begin to happen. So do not lose hope. Do not stop believing that God has something incredible in store for you. Keep praying, keep seeking, and keep trusting that he who promised is faithful to fulfill every word spoken over your life. And when that moment of surprise finally comes, when God shows up in ways you never imagined, do not be afraid to embrace it with open arms. Receive his blessings with gratitude and humility, knowing that they are gifts from a loving father who delights in giving good things to his children. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. My friends, remember God's surprises are worth the wait. They are worth the struggle. They are worth the tears, the doubts and the fears. Because in the end, when you look back on your journey and see how far you have come, you will realize that every twist and turn, every delay and setback, was just part of God's perfect plan to lead you to the place he always intended for you to be. Lewis says, If we admit God, we must admit miracles. Indeed, a God who did not perform miracles would be a non-intervening deity. But it is precisely this divine intervention which miracles represent that is, an integral part of the Christian experience. So do not be surprised when a miracle happens out of nowhere. For if you are on his path, you can be sure that a miracle is being prepared in your life. My dear friends, let us delve even deeper into this truth, because the essence of God's surprises is not just about immediate blessings, but about the transformation they bring to your life. When God surprises you, it is not just about external circumstances changing in your favor. It is about the internal transformation that takes place within you. It is about the growth, maturity, and deepening of your faith. 
that occur as you navigate the highs and lows of life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, it says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You see, God's surprises are often accompanied by a profound sense of his presence, a certainty that he is with you every step of the way, guiding you, strengthening you, and equipping you for the journey ahead. Think about the story of Joseph in the Bible. Here was a young man who experienced more than his share of highs and lows. A beloved son sold into slavery, falsely accused, thrown into prison. But through it all, God was with him, orchestrating events behind the scenes, preparing him for the incredible role he would play in saving his family and preserving a nation. And when the moment of surprise finally came, when Joseph was elevated to a position of power and influence, second only to Pharaoh himself, it was not just about the external blessings of wealth and status. It was about the internal transformation that had occurred within Joseph, a transformation that enabled him to forgive his brothers, reconcile with his family, and fulfill the purpose for which God had called him. Lewis says, The fact that what we call human suffering originates in our own mistakes and the mistakes of others is a fact that only aggravates our situation. But if suffering is a state of war against God's purpose, this state cannot be definitive. If God is good, he cannot allow such a state of affairs. He whispers in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Pain is a terrible thing, but we never find a sincere goodness that is not willing to risk inflicting pain when it comes to a lower being. Yet it is precisely to this that God's goodness leads us, to use it not for our own good, but for the good of others. He says this in his book, The Problem of Pain. The same is true for each of us. When God surprises us, it is not just about what he does for us, but what he does in us. It is about the deepening of our character, the strengthening of our faith, and the aligning of our hearts with his purposes. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Therefore, if you are in a season of waiting, uncertainty, or difficulty, Take heart. God is at work in your life, even when you cannot see or feel it. He is preparing you for the surprises he has in store. And when they come, they will be more than you could ever ask or imagine. But in the meantime, do not waste the waiting. Embrace it as an opportunity for growth, learning, and drawing closer to the one who holds your future in his hands. Trust his timing, trust his goodness, and trust his faithfulness, knowing that he who promised is faithful to fulfill every word spoken over your life. Lewis says, Imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild that house, at first perhaps. You can understand what he is doing. He is getting the drains right and stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. You knew that those jobs needed doing, and so you are not surprised, but presently he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abominably and does not seem to make any sense. What on earth is he up to? The explanation is that he is building quite a different house from the one you thought of, throwing out a new wing here, putting on an extra floor there, running up towers making courtyards. You thought you were being made into a decent little cottage, but he is building a palace. He intends to come and live in it himself. He says this in his book, Mere Christianity. 
So, my dear friends, even when it seems like all hope is lost, even when the odds are against us, we can trust that God is still at work, behind the scenes, orchestrating His perfect plan for our lives. Take a moment to think about some of the greatest surprises in your own life. Maybe it was a job opportunity that came out of nowhere, a healing that defied medical explanation, or a relationship that blossomed when you least expected it. Whatever it was, I want you to know that those surprises were not accidents. They were divine appointments orchestrated by a loving and faithful God. And if he has done it before, he can certainly do it again. So if you are facing a seemingly impossible situation right now, if you are wondering how God could possibly turn things around, I want to encourage you to keep hope alive, keep trusting, keep believing, and stand firm on God's promises, knowing that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, it says, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. So, my friends, let go of your preconceived notions of how things should be and open your hearts to the unexpected ways God wants to work in your lives. Be open to his surprises, for they may come in ways and at times you least expect. But rest assured, when God surprises you, it will be in ways that exceed your wildest dreams and bring glory to his name. In Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 it says, Look at the nations and watch, be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. Lewis says, Imagine ourselves as a grain of wheat, Good things and bad things happen to us, predictable things and unexpected things. But the things we consider bad are often the ones God uses to transform us. He molds and breaks us, not to destroy us, but to remake us in His image. God's purpose for us is much greater than we can imagine, and He often surprises us with His grace. Amid trials, when we surrender control to Him, we find that God's surprises are truly extraordinary, profoundly altering the course of our lives and revealing His divine plans. He says this in his book, Mere Christianity. Now let's delve deeper into this truth, because it is worth exploring the profound impact of God's surprises in our lives. When we discuss how God will surprise you, it is not just about momentary joy or temporary relief from life's struggles. Instead, it is about a transformative experience that alters the course of your life. Consider this. God's surprises have the power to reshape our destinies, transform our challenges into opportunities, and reveal His divine plan for our lives. They are not limited by our circumstances or understanding. Instead, they transcend our human limitations and bring forth His divine purposes. Think about the moments in your own life when you were caught by surprise, by a sudden blessing, or an unexpected turn of events. Maybe it was a job offer that came out of nowhere, a healing that defied medical explanation, or a relationship that blossomed when you least expected it. In those moments, it becomes clear that God's hand is at work, orchestrating events for His divine purposes. And here's the beautiful thing. God's surprises are available to each one of us, regardless of our circumstances or past mistakes. All that is required is a willing and open heart, ready to receive what God has in store. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope, and a future. Therefore, if you are feeling discouraged or uncertain about the future, take heart. God is still in the business of surprising His people, and He delights in revealing His goodness and grace 
in unexpected ways. But we must be willing to let go of our own plans and expectations and instead trust in God's perfect plan, even when it doesn't make sense to us. For it is in our surrender, in our willingness to let God be God, that his surprises can truly take root and flourish in our lives. My friends, as we continue to walk in faith and expect God's surprises, it is crucial to recognize that his plans often unfold in ways that defy our expectations. We may desire immediate answers or clear paths, but God's timing is purposeful and his methods are often mysterious. In moments of doubt or discouragement, we must anchor ourselves in the truth that God's surprises are rooted in his unchanging character. He is faithful, loving, and infinitely wise, and his surprises are designed to draw us closer to him and deepen our trust in his goodness. Moreover, God's surprises are not limited by our circumstances or restricted by our limitations. In Psalm chapter 37, verses 4 and 5, it says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He is the God of the impossible, and he delights in turning our weaknesses into opportunities for his strength to be revealed. Therefore, even when we feel inadequate or ill-prepared, we can rest assured that God is working all things for our good. So let's face each day with expectant hearts, knowing that God is working in every detail of our lives. Let's remain open to his guidance, even when it leads us down unexpected paths. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's rejoice in the knowledge that God's surprises are always worth the wait, always worth the journey, and always worth the sacrifice. So lift your heads, my friends, and rejoice, for the God of surprises is by your side, and he is about to do something amazing in your lives. Get ready. Be excited and prepared to be awestruck, because God is about to surprise you with his goodness and grace. As we conclude this powerful message, I want to encourage you to take what you have heard today and share it with those you love. The message of God's surprises is too good to keep to ourselves. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So, whether through a conversation, a text message, or a simple act of kindness. Let others know about the incredible ways God is working in our lives. And if you felt inspired by what you heard today, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you will stay connected with more uplifting messages, encouraging sermons, and reminders of God's faithfulness in every season of life. Together, let's continue spreading the message of hope, faith, and love to the ends of the earth. And as we do so, let us always remember that God's surprises are just around the corner, ready to transform our lives in ways we never imagined. Thank you for being with us today, and may God bless you abundantly as you continue to walk in faith. Let's close this message with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ seeking your divine intervention in my life. I know that you are a God of miracles and that nothing is impossible for you. I ask that you guide me in all my financial matters and help me find the means to support myself and my family. Provide me with the resources and opportunities needed to overcome my financial difficulties and live a life of abundance. I also ask for your healing touch upon my body mind and spirit. Bring healing to those suffering from illnesses and pain and restore them to good health. I pray for your protection over my family and loved ones. 
and I ask that you keep us safe from all harm and danger. Lord, I trust in your infinite wisdom and love, and I know that you will always be with me, guiding me on my journey. I thank you for all the blessings you have poured out upon me and for the miracles that are yet to come. I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Today we will explore seven painful yet extraordinarily valuable lessons that we can learn from C.S. Lewis. These lessons, drawn from his life, his faith, and his works, invite us to reflect on love, loss, pain, faith, and hope in ways we may have never considered before. From facing the reality of suffering to understanding the importance of sacrifice, from accepting death to pursuing truth even when uncomfortable, these lessons challenge us, comfort us, and above all, teach us to live more fully and meaningfully. The first one is, pain is an instrument of change. In moments of suffering, when pain envelops our hearts like a dense fog, it may seem like we are walking alone through a dark and unfamiliar valley. Lewis's journey through the dark valley of suffering, as detailed in The Problem of Pain, offers deep and reflective insights into human nature, suffering, in the Christian faith. Confronting the acute pain of losing his wife, Joy Davidman, he writes, getting over it so soon? But the words are ambiguous. To say the patient is getting over it after an operation for appendicitis is one thing. After he's had his leg off is quite another. After that operation, either the wounded stump heals or the man dies. If it heals, the fierce continuous pain will stop. Presently, he'll get back his strength and be able to stump about on his wooden leg. He has got over it. But he will probably have recurrent pains in the stump all his life, and perhaps pretty bad ones. And he will always be a one-legged man. There will be hardly any moment when he forgets it. Bathing, dressing, sitting down and getting up again, even lying in bed will all be different. His whole way of life will be changed. All sorts of pleasures and activities that he once took for granted will have to be simply written off. Duties, too. At present, I am learning to get about on crutches. Perhaps I shall presently be given a wooden leg, but I shall never be a biped again. Suffering, though inherently painful and often difficult to comprehend, carries significant potential for personal and spiritual transformation. Suffering plays several crucial roles in human life in the Christian journey. Know that every tear shed, every deep sigh, every moment of despair does not go unnoticed. Like stars shining brighter against the darkness of the night sky, so is the love that surrounds us, even when least perceived. There is a greater strength, a loving presence that sustains us, embraces us, and leads us through the shadows into the light. Suffering, however arduous, carries seeds of growth and renewal. Like rain falling, bringing new life to parched earth, so can our trials transform us, nurturing our souls with understanding, compassion, and profound resilience. We are being shaped, refined, prepared to bloom in ways we never imagined possible. Suffering serves as an awakening, a severe yet necessary call to the reality of our need for God. In the problem of pain, he suggests that God speaks to us through our pleasure, but shouts at us through our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Suffering, therefore, can be seen as a divine tool meant to break our complacency and self-sufficiency, leading us to a deeper and more sincere dependence on God. Lewis would also emphasize the role of suffering in character growth and purification. Just as gold is refined by fire, so are our souls purified through trials and pains. Suffering confronts us with our own weaknesses, failures, and sins. It humbles us and makes us recognize our inability to face life on our own. This process of purification is essential for us to become more like Christ, developing virtues such as patience, perseverance, compassion, and genuine faith. Two, human love is ephemeral. In moments of loss and farewell, when love seems to fade like the morning mist, we may find ourselves lost in a sea of sadness, questioning the purpose of loving when love can be so ephemeral. In The Four Loves, Lewis explores different types of love, affection, friendship, eros, romantic love, and agape, unconditional love or charity. Lewis acknowledges that human loves, affection, friendship, and eros 
are inherently imperfect and can be ephemeral, subject to change and even termination. However, he sees these loves as means through which we learn to love more deeply and truly, moving us towards agape, the love that is selfless and reflects more closely the love of God. Thus, even the transient nature of human loves has value, serving as a school for spiritual and moral growth. In our journey through life, we encounter the ethereal beauty of love in its many forms, each leaving an indelible mark on our soul. Human love, in all its glory and pain, is a dance of shadows and light, a fabric woven with threads of fleeting moments and lasting memories. Though love may at times seem ephemeral, slipping through our fingers like grains of sand in the wind, it offers us lessons of profound wisdom and truth. Lewis does not ignore the pain that accompanies the loss of human loves. As seen earlier in his deeply personal account of his grief after the death of his wife, Joy Davidman, Lewis directly confronts the pain of loss. He writes about the challenge of reconciling his deep love for his wife with the brutal reality of her absence. Through this process, we realize how love and loss can lead to a deeper understanding of oneself, of God, and of the nature of true love. 3. Abandoned Pride Considered as the great sin that is at the root of all other sins. In his works, especially in Mere Christianity, Lewis examines how pride can corrupt the essence of the human being and distance them from both God and others. Pride is essentially competitive by nature. It is not about having more, but having more than the next person. This competitive nature of pride leads us to constantly compare ourselves to others, resulting in envy, resentment, and a sense of superiority or inferiority. This comparison is destructive to our relationships as it prevents us from genuinely loving others, making us self-centered and focused on our desires to be more than others. In moments of struggle and challenge, when the weight of the world seems immense and the path ahead uncertain, it is natural to feel overwhelmed and alone. However, even in the darkest hours, there is a light of hope and an invitation to embrace humility, a virtue that, far from diminishing us, reveals the true greatness of our humanity. For Lewis, pride is the fundamental barrier between man and God. In pride, man seeks to elevate himself, placing himself in the place of God, desiring to be the master of his own destiny and the arbiter of his own worth. This reverses the natural order of things as it puts the creature above the Creator. Pride makes us forget our dependence on God and our need for His grace, distancing us from the humility essential for true communion with Him. Being humble is the true acknowledgement of our position before God and others. Humility frees us from the need to constantly compete, allowing us to find satisfaction and value not in being better than others, but in our relationship with God and in serving others. Humility paves the way for true love, for authentic relationships, and for a life in genuine community. 4. Death is a part of life. Death is often seen as a separation a painful end to the connections and experiences we weave throughout our lives. It brings with it sharp pain and insurmountable longing, leaving a void where there once was laughter, conversation, and presence. And yet within this same pain, we find a powerful reminder of the love we shared, the fragility of life, and the importance of living each day with purpose and meaning. Death is not the end. It is a passage to a deeper and eternal reality. In several of his works, especially in the Chronicles of Narnia, Lewis uses metaphors and allegories to describe death as a gateway to true life. This theme is vividly illustrated in the conclusion of The Last Battle, where the characters discover that what they considered to be the end is only the beginning of their true story, which is going to begin now and last forever. Despite his realistic approach to the suffering that accompanies death, he also offers comfort. He reminds us that, for the Christian, death is the beginning of life in the presence of God a life free from pain, suffering, and separation. The hope of resurrection and the promise of new creation offer a perspective that transforms mourning into joy, not denying the pain of loss, but placing it in a broader context of redemption and renewal. In this moment of reflection on death, may we find not only acceptance, but also a deeper appreciation for the precious gift that is life. May the awareness of our mortality inspire us to live more fully, to embrace those we love more tightly, and to find joy and meaning in the simplest moments. 5. The Need for Forgiveness 
Forgiveness is an act of immense courage and generosity, a true gesture of strength that reflects the depth of our hearts and the greatness of our souls. However, we recognize that the path to forgiveness can be filled with challenges, doubts, and pains. Yet it is also a path of healing, freedom, and renewal. Forgiveness is seen as essential for the reconciliation and restoration of broken relationships. In Matthew, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. By choosing to forgive, you are not only releasing someone from their emotional debt, you are, more importantly, freeing yourself from the chains of resentment and bitterness that weigh upon your spirit. This is an act of self-love as much as it is an act of love for others. You allow yourself to breathe more freely, to make room in your heart for more joy and peace, and to walk lighter through life. In his work, Lewis not only emphasizes the importance of forgiveness, but also explores its difficulties in the transformation it can bring about in both the forgiver and the forgiven. Forgiveness is also presented as a means of personal liberation from resentment and bitterness. In Ephesians 4.31-32, Paul exhorts Christians to get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Remember, forgiving does not mean forgetting what happened or minimizing the pain that was caused. It also does not require you to restore a relationship to what it was before. It does mean, however, acknowledging the pain, allowing yourself to feel and process that pain, and then choosing to let it go so as not to carry its weight in your heart. In his writings, Lewis highlighted that forgiving is to imitate God. He often reflected on how God forgives us despite our faults, suggesting that by forgiving others, we are following the divine example. The same is said in Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. 6. The importance of questioning and doubting. If you're going through a period of doubt and questioning, know that you're not alone on your journey. Doubt, although it may seem like an unwelcome visitor, is an integral part of the human experience, especially on the path of faith. It's not a sign of weakness, but an indication of your profound search for truth and meaning. Lewis writes, Can a mortal ask questions which God finds unanswerable? Quite easily, I should think. All nonsense questions are unanswerable. How many hours are there in a mile? Is yellow square or round? Probably half the questions we ask. Half our great theological and metaphysical problems are like that. He didn't see doubt as necessarily opposed to faith, but as a natural and often essential part of a person's spiritual journey. In his works, he suggested that facing and exploring our doubts, rather than avoiding or suppressing them, can lead to a richer understanding and a stronger faith. He understood that true faith is tested and refined through challenges, including questioning and doubt. When facing your doubts, I encourage you to remember that faith doesn't demand the absence of questioning but the presence of trust, even when answers seem distant. Allow yourself to express your uncertainties and fears to God, knowing that He is listening. Seek community and dialogue with others who may share your experiences and offer support. Faith is often a collective journey, not just a solitary path. In James 1, 5, 6. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. This passage encourages seeking God for wisdom in times of doubt, highlighting the importance of faith in this process. However, it also acknowledges the reality of doubt, likening it to the instability of sea waves. Even in Matthew 28, 17, after the resurrection, when Jesus appeared to the eleven disciples, the Bible says, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Furthermore, consider that the act of questioning can be a means for God to shape and refine your faith, making it more personal, alive, and authentic. Every question you ask can be a seed for deeper understanding and a stronger relationship with the Creator. Finally, know that it's okay not to have all the answers right now. Faith, at its core, 
involves walking with confidence even amidst the fog of uncertainty. God doesn't require us to walk this journey with blind faith, but with an open heart, willing to learn and grow even in doubts. May you find comfort and strength in the assurance that your doubts are not a hindrance to God, but a path through which He can guide you to a deeper and more meaningful faith. May your journey through doubt lead you to renewed confidence and lasting peace. 7. To all gratitude. In moments of pain and adversity, it can seem almost impossible to find reasons to be grateful. Pain, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, has the power to darken our view of the world, making it difficult to see beyond our immediate suffering. Pain is an inescapable part of the human condition, a universal language that we all, at some point, learn to speak. It teaches us about our own vulnerability, about our need for others, and about the impermanence of all things. But paradoxically, within pain, there are also seeds of growth, understanding, and yes, gratitude. Being grateful amidst pain doesn't mean ignoring or minimizing your suffering. It's not an act of denial, but of profound courage and affirmation. It means acknowledging the rays of light amidst the darkness, the moments of beauty and kindness that persist despite everything. Gratitude helps us remember that even on the darkest nights, the stars still shine, even if we don't see them. 1. Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Gratitude has the power to transform our emotional landscape. It can help us shift our focus from our losses to our blessings, easing the burden of sorrow and making space for joy and peace. Expressing gratitude connects us to others. Sharing our gratitude, even for small things, can strengthen bonds with those around us reminding us that we are not alone on our journey. In Colossians 3.15, 17 it says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Here gratitude is seen as central to maintaining peace in the heart and foundational in all our actions. Hey there, did you enjoy delving into the depths of C.S. Lewis's teachings with us today? If you felt inspired and want to explore these valuable lessons even further, we have a special gift for you. But before that, if you're not already part of our community, now's the time to join. Click on the subscription button below the video, enable notifications so you don't miss any of our future content. And of course, if you found this video valuable, give it a like. It really helps us out. Now, about the gift, for all members of our channel, we're offering a free ebook until the end of April that delves even deeper into Lewis's teachings, exploring how his ideas can be applied in our daily lives. This material is exclusive and has been prepared with a lot of care for you. To get yours, simply check the description of this video or the pinned comments, where you'll find the link to become a member, if you're not already, and how to download your ebook for free as soon as it's available. Don't miss this chance to dive deeper into the thoughts and reflections of one of the most influential authors of the 20th century. Join us, become part of our community, and let's together explore the legacy of C.S. Lewis. Until the next video.